Step 14. Installing Reflective or Radiant Barrier Insulation Radiant barrier insulation is what you should use if you're going to insulate a steel building. Exactly how it works and why it's more effective is better left up to the expert advice of an absolute steel building consultant, so we're not going to get into that right now. Also, it's an optional item and is not included with our standard building kit, but because some people order it along with the building, we're going to show you how to install it. For the purposes of this installation demonstration, we're only going to be putting insulation on one wall, but we'll explain how to install insulation on the whole building. Installing insulation is done in conjunction with installation of exterior panels. As such, it wouldn't be a bad idea for those who have purchased insulation with their building to first watch this chapter, then watch the complete section on installing the exterior panels, and then come back to this before putting your insulation on. For those of you who did not purchase insulation with your building, you can skip this chapter and move on to the next, which shows you how to put on your exterior panels. Roughly a quarter inch thick, this insulation is designed to be put directly on the frame before you put the exterior panels on. Take a measurement from the bottom of the base rail to the top edge of the first roof purlin and cut a length of insulation to match. It is held in place using the double-sided tape that was included in the purchase of the insulation. Adhere the double-sided tape to the 2 inch by 3 inch frame members. Also it's a good idea to put some here and there on frame pieces just to make sure it stays up there until you get the exterior panels on. and to the top of the first purlin. When installing insulation or exterior panels, always start at the left side as you're facing the wall of the gable or peaked walls and work toward the right. We have the panels sized to work this way. For the sides, Start at the front end, work toward the back on both sides. The white side of the insulation goes toward the interior of the building. When applying the insulation to the frame, always start at the bottom and work your way up. Try to keep your insulation tight and without sags or wrinkles in it. Your insulation is 48 inches wide and is going to run vertically. Trimming insulation around doors and windows. When you get to the door and or window openings, you'll need to trim the insulation. Using the utility knife, trim the insulation even with the edge of where the back flange to the J-trim is going to be. As you get a row of insulation on, you can then apply a sheet of the exterior panel over it. This will prevent the wind or elements from damaging the insulation. This is very important. Applying an exterior panel over each length of insulation as you go. If you don't, you're liable to have all the insulation come down with a bit of wind. Which brings me to an important point. Don't try installing insulation on a windy day. Next, place your exterior wall panel over the insulation and screw right through the exterior panel, through the insulation, and into your building frame.
The edges of the insulation should fit together tightly and overlap slightly. Now, on the inside of the building, use the single-sided white or scrim tape and run that over any of the seams. When you come to an exterior frame piece, use your razor knife to trim any excess that gets stuck to those frame parts. Be sure to evenly and firmly press the tape, especially against the seams, so it adheres properly. 